Hello and welcome to Decisions Decisions, what to look for when selecting your 4-H project beef by Becky Bricks. Today we will be looking at a couple different things related to choosing your market beef. Um, first we will look at key considerations that you should put in, in your mind before you go looking for animals. Next we will look for traits to look for in the animal. And finally we will look at tips for success. We will begin by looking at key considerations. These are general questions you should ask yourself prior to going to look for an animal. The first, probably most important question is when is your fair? It takes 18 to 14 months for an animal to reach its optimal, for a beef animal to reach its optimal show maturity. Meaning that if you get a spring calved calf in November, October, that gives you eight to 10 months to add weight, muscle, and develop handling skills. Additionally, you want to consider what breed you're interested in. Um, are you going to go with the same thing you've always, or are your parents going to help you with that decision? That's the, this is the time to make that decision. Additionally, you'll want to look at goals. These are your goals for the entire project year. What would you like to accomplish? And maybe develop some steps to get there. So, once you have gotten through the considerations, you'll also want to look at where you're headed. How, what acceptable um, standards are your guiding forces what to get you to. You like to have a weight of 1,100 to 1,350 pounds with a hip height of 49.5 and 53.5 inches with a fat cover of a quarter and a half an inch. But now to get to the meat and potatoes of this presentation, we are going to examine what you need to look for when you're looking at calves to determine if that will be your 4-H animal. The first is going to be the frame. This is going to be the bone structure and the overall body of the animal. Next, we'll look at muscles. How they're distributed is very important and in determining how well they will do. Next, we'll look at structural correctness. This is how well they are, their joints are placed on their body and they move. Additionally, we'll look at disposition. You want to look for an animal that is not going to run you over at every opportunity. And finally, we'll touch on balance. Balance is overall eye appeal of the animal. Um, the one feeling, you know this one looks good, it's got all of the four other characteristics okay, but you know this one you're gonna have a good relationship with and do well with. We will begin by looking at frame. Frame is an adequate, you're looking for an animal with adequate frame, moderate in size, long body, clean and free of excess waste through the brisket and neck. In the example below, we'll see three, you see three frame sizes. There's the large, medium, and then the small. The large dwarfs all others. This one will make your beef definitely stand out, but not in the good way you're wanting. Additionally, a small framed animal will also stand out in the ring and not give you a good placing usually. So you're looking for a medium-sized, average-looking um, frame. Next, we'll look at muscling. Muscles on your market animal is, are very important. There should be expression in the lower quarter of the round. They should have wide-based feet, feet apart, wide over the top, and a straight back through the rump. In the example on the right, you will see three different examples of muscling. The first is what you're looking for. Distribution of muscling is it both in the front and in the rear um, and throughout the body. You want muscling throughout the brisket, the rump, and their body. So this one's ideal. The second one, you see that it's more clumpy bump, or muscling in one half of its body rather than the other. This is not likely to change as they grow older. Don't live in a fantasy that it will. Um, and then the third one is a very lean steer. Um, there's no muscling basically at all in the rear portion. So you want to find an animal that has even distribution of muscle throughout. It's a challenge, but it can happen. Next, we'll look at structural correctness. Structural correctness is one of the most important aspects to examine. Um, it's what your judge is looking for mostly. Um, the other two will definitely kick you out, but structural correctness is how you choose reserve from champion. Um, they should have, a, you're looking for a deep bodied calf that is full in the flank with uniform capacity to add muscle and weight. 
It should have a slight slope in the shoulders with a level hip, muscle definition, and deep in the body, um, as well as a wide chest. Next, we'll look at the structural correctness related to movement. Um, structural correctness related to movement includes walk, they should walk smooth, smooth with long strides. Feet should be pointed straight ahead when they're walking and they're standing. They should have nice straight legs set on the hawk with a pattern that has some slope to it. And they should walk freely with, and flex while walking. Here are a couple leg patterning patterns that you'd want to avoid when looking at an animal. As I emphasized earlier, straight legs and straight toes are important to creating a structurally correct animal. So avoid any that have bowed legs or cowed hawks where their back of their legs come into a V shape, or ones that have toed leg or toes out or their toes in. Finally, we'll look at the disposition of the animal. Select an animal that you can handle and gentle down and you'll be able to handle in the future. Avoid the animal that's running all over the place saying, going berserko, um, they'll be a challenge. It may be valuable to ask your breeder about the sire and the mom's disposition, as well as the breed in particular, overall, and his herd in particular. Phew, that was a lot of information. Don't worry. Don't try to be perfect. Here are a few tips to success. It's impossible to find a steer or a heifer who will fit all of the criteria mentioned today. Focus on, the, focus on the overall look of the animal. Take advantage of the good cattle people in your community, parents, teachers, 4-H leaders, and other 4-Hers who have been in the project. Use the resources that are available to you. Learning takes time. Don't expect to learn it overnight, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Care, and most importantly of all the tips to access, success, just because you have your animal does not mean this process is done. It is actually just beginning, so take advantage of the time and work with your animal, take care of them, keep records, and most importantly, have fun. Take a breath, it'll be okay, and good luck. Here are additional resources if you need them.